taking the, the mount there in his local debut for Doug O'Neill. Your favorite calculator is in. We were just about set. This is the 15th running of the, the Grade 3 Sham Stakes with Kentucky Derby qualifying points on the line. Here's Trevor Denman with the call. And away they go. St. Joe Bay bobbled a little at the start. Rock Shandy's fast into stride, and St. Joe Bay wanted that lead. St. Joe Bay now sprints through to take over. Pioneer of the West is right there in second. They sprint early. Rock Shandy, Papa Cool, Papa Cool's hooked a little wide. Unblunted down at the rail is only three and a half off the leaders. The Grey is the favorite calculator now starting to pass some horses. In behind that comes Rock and Adam at the back of the leading group, and last of all is Hero Ten All. Down the back stretch they go, and St. Joe Bay at the rail gets pressure from Pioneer of the West. They stride for stride. Papa Cool, Papa Cool in third. Rock Shandy down at the rail. Calculators in fifth. No more than three lengths covers all those runners. Then comes Rock and Adam, unblunted down at the rail, and still last of all is Hero Ten All. Less than a half mile to go in the sham now, and St. Joe Bay continues to show the way to Pioneer of the West. Rock Shandy, Papa Cool, Papa Cool between them. Calculator now has to go on the far side, and Calculator comes to tackle them. Then back to Rock and Adam, unblunted behind that. Coming to the quarter pole, and here's Calculator the Grey on the outside. Calculator now takes the lead at the top of the lane in the sham, and it's Calculator just getting a tap on the shoulder now. He's drawing clear. St. Joe Bay on the inside, Pioneer of the West and Rock Shandy. Past the eighth pole they come and it's all Calculator. Calculator out here moving like a winner in the sham. Calculator could not have been more impressive. Elvis Trujillo just had to point him in the right direction. Calculator waltzes home. Second Rock Shandy and third Pioneer of the West. 752 and a photo, maybe the one horse for the super effective, but no doubt about the winner. And th that is an outstanding effort given how much ground calculators surrendered around both turns. Well, the first turn, he had to be five or six wide. They floated him out on the first turn. And then Elvis did a good job to settle him on the backside. And then he just made his run. And I like this. This is a horse that's been running second a lot. Get him to the front end, stay busy on him. And this is a horse that can move forward too. Now sniffing the winner's circle. I like the way he straightened out here and, and went on with it here. The five rock shandy, you know, ran a little greenly for the first time on dirt. I think is going to improve, too, with that pedigree. That was a good effort, really good effort. As Richard mentioned, loss, ground loss. I was a little disappointed with the eight, uh, the horse who, uh, who yeah. was kind of getting a nice setup, Hero 10 all. There was a good amount of speed early on. They lined up four or five wide across the track, kind of came over, saved ground on the inside. Didn't show anything at all late. Not much response, but a, a big win there by your odds-on favorite calculator who breaks his maiden in a grade three, and he validates the, the high opinion that certainly his connections have always had. So now he him. has 10 points. 10 points. So, you know, if, if you... Now you're not pressed. You don't need to get this horse to a bigger race. You could sit for a while and maybe swallow up second or third in the Santa Anita Derby. You can. You have more options now. Maybe this is why Peter chose this spot. Now, now the chess game begins exactly. as, as the yeah. trainers uh, decide which of the the races they want. Uh, you know, and any more, it has become the, the the fashion that trainers want to come to the Kentucky Derby with the freshest yes. possible yep. horse. In particular, since they changed the 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 system to the point system now and, and all the, the big races are back weighted. It really does you no know, good to, to debut a lot of your good horses early on in their two year old season because they're running in races that aren't really for any points and a lot of trainers want to save them and keep them fresh for this time. So calculator, I, you know, and again, you have to say as, as big as he ran, that just flatters, it flatters Texas Red and, and, American, and, and Pharaoh. American Pharaoh. I mean, yeah. how good is American Pharaoh if he comes back, the same horse that we saw winning back? Well, he's going to be really good. I mean, and like you said, how good has Texas Red been? He's been away for a little while. I'm sure he's gotten a little bit bigger and stronger, too, going into his three-year-old season. So, yeah, he's in the California horses could be good again. You never know. This is still early, though, and um, this is a great little... Uh, uh, Colt here, you know, in summation was a good sprinter. Every once in a while, they can get um, a longer horse, but you get the gray from the bottom side of that alphabet soup who could run all day. So maybe this horse is going to get better with distance. I just got some information, too, that uh, this morning Texas Red worked, and I think we have video of Texas Red's work. This was the horse who Calculator had just defeated right. in his last start. Texas Red, who won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, uh, worked nicely this morning, and 
and uh, we showed you the graphic uh, saying the West is best. We got a couple good horses out here on the West. Listen, insofar as validating the, the form of this year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I think we're on solid ground by saying that. And here and here's your winner. And Texas Red, I mean, you know, it was a jaw-dropping run in the Breeders' and Cup. And you liked this horse in the Breeders' Cup, right, Oh no, no, I was the, it was the bonehead play of all time because after American Pharaoh scratched out of the race, Calculator was my selection. And I thought I was being, you know, really edgy to pick him because he was 15 to 1 on the morning line. When he scratched, the logical move yeah, would have been to Texas land Red. on Texas Red. And I didn't. Oh, wow, and he was impressive. And you see him this morning full of himself. Now, this is... Uh, you know, he's getting back, getting ready. He hasn't run since the Breeders' Cup here, Gino. We're not exactly uh, clockers here or trainers, but it was, the horse looks good in the flesh. I thought he did everything right. You can see his ears are forward. He looks like he's waiting for a command. Um, I would think Kent DeSormo was probably on him this morning, and now he's just a light little jog as the horse on the inside is going to come up. You know, that's oh, there he is. Line. That horse on the inside is firing line. That's okay. the horse who was right behind ah. Dortmund in the grade one Los Al Futurity. You could see him quick and soon as he saw yeah. that horse on the inside. Right, wow. Like. So look at that. Yeah. He, yeah, he comes right back at firing yeah. line here. And, and that's uh, completely random. I mean, that's one of those things that no one's no one's really allowing for. Yeah. Uh, and, and bear in mind that firing line is working along the, the rail. The Texas rail. Red was being kept off the rail, which generally speaking is a sign that the connections wanted Texas Red mm -hmm. to go a little easier. The horse that's working down on the rail is probably being urged. Yeah. Well, you can see they, they end up going the six furlongs at 117 and change. They were probably thinking they were going to go 118, 119, and that horse on the inside just quicken the horse up a tiny bit. To me, it looked like a drill just to give the horse a little bit more fitness. You'll probably see a little bit faster drills. To me, that was a complete fitness drill with the gallop out towards a mile, and I thought that was a good drill. You could see that horse physically quick as soon as he saw that horse come to his inside. That is a great sign, and to me, in the flesh, he looked tremendous as well. And like we said before the sham, the horse is out here in the West. Again, um, strong hand so far, and we'll see if Texas Red um, is the same horse as a three-year-old. Okay, so we, we entered into that video with our attention on Texas Red, but Firing Line made a, made a yeah. guest appearance there. Let's find out what, what his trainer, Simon Callahan, thought of his work today. Texas Red, um, you know, I guess we didn't really expect that, but, um, you know, our horse just got what he needed to out of his first work back. It was just, just to get him, you know, nice sort of stretch of his legs, which he did, and, you know, he looked great. Did his first um, half mile this morning, um, which went really well. Um, you know, just a very easy half mile, and, um, you know, we'll start now to um, get some stronger works into him. All right, firing line who broke his maiden very comfortably in the second start of his career and then was part of that three horse photo finish in the, the Low South Futurity. He kind of uh, hooks Texas Red there unexpectedly <laughs> in mid stretch of their mutual works. And any opportunity we get to do a little, little trash talking on the Derby Trail, we like that. Yeah, it is oh, yeah. true. That is true. But you make a great point that every once in a while,